I like him, but he's overpriced. What do you mean I'm overpriced? Oh yeah, baby, I would love it. Uh, what are you talking about? You just need to talk about 80% of the speed and everything will be better. Why don't you listen 20% faster? That's right, it's that time of the week. I am Jaime Rivera, this is Pocket Now, and this is our Pocket Now Daily Recap for last week. So on Monday, I asked you if you would pay extra for an Android-equipped vehicle. The news were about Audi and Google and all these cars and that open automotive alliance being created to bring Android into your dashboard. We have 225 comments out of which one of them says, Android is free, but hardware is not, so you'll definitely have to pay for it. Now, here's the deal. There is already hardware on your dashboard. You're just changing the operating system. And obviously, it would require better chips. There is a lot here, but NVIDIA is already on this ground. So I do assume that because of the fact that Android is a free operating system, then why not? Why shouldn't it be free? But yeah, you do have a good point. Then another commenter says, can't wait for the news of the first rooted car. It will happen someday. And yeah, this is probably one of the biggest issues with bringing Android into your dashboard. Obviously the fact that, yeah, you will be able to root it and that's awesome for some people, but not really good for others. Then Ashley Higgins says, Android and cars is going to be a fatally bad idea as idiots will start loading Facebook as they are driving. And again, that's the biggest problem about rooting your car. The fact that even though Android will not be designed to do this, trust me, there will be a lot of people that will be doing this. Then on Tuesday, I asked you if you would like the new Pebble Steel and would you pay $250 for it because the news were of the new Pebble Steel being announced at CES and pre-orders beginning. We have 320 comments out of which one of them says, hell to the nat. For $250, you could just buy another unlocked phone and strap it to your damn wrist. Then yeah, sure. For $250, I could buy a computer and use it to make phone calls, right? The problem is, yeah, you can do that, but who would be dumb enough to strap a phone on your wrist? Uh, you know, it's form and functionality. Then Costin588 says, I would easily spend $250 on the steel so long as it plays nicely with the GS3 so I can take full advantage of it. And that's the biggest problem that the, probably the most popular Android phone out there are the Galaxy phones. And yeah, these don't really work well with the Pebble, at least in my experience, but that's obviously because Samsung wants to sell you the gear. Then Goma says, $250 is a good price, I think. Anyways, I would like to see the Pocket Now review and yeah, Wait for our review. Our review will definitely be live soon, as soon as the product is out there. A lot of us would want to see what is the biggest difference for those of us that are already carrying a Pebble. Would we pay those extra $150? I would like now say that, for example, you're paying for glass and stainless steel, whereas this is plastic and rubber. So yeah, I think that those $100 extra do make sense. Then on Wednesday, I asked you if dual booting Windows tablets would interest you because the news were of Intel building new chips with the focus on allowing you to dual boot in four seconds between Android and Windows. We have 372 comments out of which Bargo Mata says, Android tablet entertainment and a Windows mode for work. That would be killer. And yes, that is actually a great comment. The fact that we could have the option to get all the applications that we like from Android, but then again, when we need work, definitely Android tablets don't do the best job, but Windows tablets do. So that's a great combination. Then another commenter says, of course, but with a good price, maybe $250 or $350. It would be awesome. I just don't think it'll happen. And if it does, it'll obviously be on cheap tablets, and that's not necessarily good. Then Robbie Brett says, sounds like a good idea to me, but dual OS requires larger memory space, which means a higher price. And yeah, I don't think that this new mentality will be cheap. But then again, hey, Intel is on this bandwagon and the iPad is making such a strike on their sales that I'm sure that they want to play hardball. Then on Thursday, I asked you, what would you change of the Galaxy S5? The news were of uh, Samsung CEO coming to Bloomberg, explaining everything that they were planning, a full revamp for this phone and everything. We have 870 comments, out of which Joaquin Aria says, the new tablet touch was UI on the S5. And yes, I do agree with that. That would be awesome. That new tablet UI is awesome. The rumors are that it is coming. We have seen the leak. Sadly, it'll come to the GS5 first, and then you'll probably have to wait a year to get it on your older phones. But again, that is a good idea. Another commenter says make the s5 cheap ditch the gimmicky touch which features do something like the tab note pros snapdragon 800 is already more than enough for flagship ois please and yeah you pretty much nailed it there that would be the dream galaxy phone then jordan isaac says build quality and battery life seriously and we are going to agree half on that build quality is not something i complain about because plastic is more resilient than aluminum when falling but then again on the other hand the battery life of the galaxy lineup except the note lineup has been terrible just terrible you can't get a full day on that thing, not even from the Galaxy S1 on. So yeah, that is one thing that I would be wishing they would change at least. 
And finally, on Friday, I asked you if you would pay for a smaller and less powered Galaxy Note 3 because the leaks are of the Galaxy Note 3 Neo, which is the light variant. We have 410 comments, out of which David Laman says people buy the Note 3 because they want a big phone. And no, I don't buy the Note 3 because I want a big phone. I buy it because it brings me additional features that I can't get on another phone and I do have to put up with its size. So it does make sense to have a smaller Galaxy Note 3. Um, but then again, why not just give me a Galaxy S5 with no capabilities? and just sell me the S Pen, you know, on another, well, you know, separately. Then I go Pro HD says, Samsung is making way too many phones, period. And we agree on that, but they can, so why complain? Then John T. Kamau says, smaller Note 3, five inches or less, yes. Less powerful Note 3, no, and we agree on that. I don't want a less powerful Note 3. What I want is a smaller Note 3, or again, sell me a Galaxy S5 and sell me the S Pen separately. I'd be willing to pay $50 for that if you wanted to. But again, I don't, want a big phone. I put up with it because it gives me the multi-window support that I like, but not necessarily because I like a big phone. So again, these are the comments for this week. That's it for our Pocket Now Daily Recap. Thank you very much for watching. A couple of tips if you want your comments to be featured. Number one, keep them short. Number two, stick to the point. Number three, try to get some thumbs up. It helps us spot them a lot easier. You can also follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can also follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you on the next recap.